talking about things that I absolutely despise. I say this every single time these poor brothers fight. I say this, but I'm saying this now. I'm never watching these guys fight again. <laughs> I say it all the time and they always find a way to loop, grab me in and convince me to watch one of their fights with their marketing and their branding and their promotion and all this malarkey. But after this past weekend, Jake Paul's fight against Mike Perry, I promised myself I will never watch a Paul Brothers boxing fight ever again. That was so terrible. Obviously on Mike Perry's side, mostly, but on Jake Paul's side too. It was such a mismatch size-wise. I didn't realize how big Jake Paul is compared to Mike Perry. I always thought Mike Perry was a big boy, was a pretty stocky lad. But compared to Jake Paul, it was like there was two weight classes in between them. Not even one, two in between them. Between them, sorry. I could not understand how they were in the same ring. Then when the fight starts, Mike Perry's form of defense is just walking straight into Jake Paul's punches. No head movement, no guard, no footwork, just walking straight at him. It was wild to watch. This guy's defense was his chin, was his face, was his orbital. That was his defense. His nose was his defense. And every single time, Jake was finding him. Don't get me wrong. Mike Perry did land some decent shots. But overall, he got absolutely pummeled to the point where at the end, I think it ended at the fifth, the fifth round or something. His face is always the blood, bloody and red and stuff. Don't get me wrong, Mike Perry has got a lot of scar tissue. He's one of those type of fighters that cuts really easily too. So that could be part of it. But he looked a mess at the end. I think he got dropped like three or four times. I don't know, wherever it was. And it made me think, I'm not like an expert when it comes to combat sports. I'm not an expert when it comes to the UFC or MMA in general. But I know some of the fighters. I'm aware. I watch a lot of cards. I pride myself on watching the full card prelims, the early prelims, the prelims, the main card. You know, I check some YouTube videos out and stuff. And I remember thinking to myself, I think I might sit on a random show stream. I was thinking aloud, why am I hearing chatter on social media, on the timeline, saying Mike Perry's got a chance of winning? I couldn't get my head around it. I was like, hold on. Is this the same Mike Perry that I remember? The Mike Perry that I remember was pretty terrible in the UFC. He had some okay wins here and there, but overall, he wasn't a skilled fighter. He wasn't a skilled striker. He didn't have great boxing fundamentals. So I was struggling to figure out, why is everybody saying Mike Perry's going to win? I couldn't figure out. I was like, why? Even though Jake Paul's not a great boxer, he's been boxing, you know, he's been, he's been focusing on boxing only for the last, what, five years it feels like? Maybe less than that? But he's been focusing on that for a while. He's definitely going to beat him. And he seems to be bigger. So I never understood why people were thinking my parents got a chance. But then when I thought about it, and obviously I saw the reaction to when Jake Paul won, I was like, oh yeah, because everyone hates Jake Paul. And people want to see Jake Paul get starched. Um, they want to see him get humiliated. They want to see him get humbled. And they hope that these MMA fighters, however washed up they are, however bad they are, are going to be the ones to quote unquote teach Jake Paul lesson, set him right, or bring him down the pedestal, whatever. I guess that was the hope. But watching the fight, there was no chance that was going to happen. The only chance Mike Perry had to win was landing some sort of haymaker. But he looked awful. He looked so bad. Like, I forgot how bad he looked. And a few people have said this on social. It actually made Michael Venom Page look worse. Because Michael Venom Page lost to him, I think, for a split decision at the Bare Knuckle fighting, right? Or, or on a Bare Knuckle organization against Mike Perry. So you're thinking, hold on. How could Michael Venom Page was an elite striker lose against somebody like Mike Perry who doesn't have any footwork. All he has is the grit, the determination, and maybe the aggression, right? And the fearlessness. That's maybe a little bit important in some respects, even though all fighters are probably fearless. But in terms of his skills, I don't know, bro. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. And Jake Paul struggling to take him out was a sight to behold. Jake Paul actually struggling. And credit to Jake Paul, at least, there was a point where it seemed like he was getting frustrated because he was trying to, you know, put his lights out and he was getting dropped and standing up again and almost kind of waking. Like, Mike Perry had this weird thing that he did where he was getting knocked down. He'd get knocked down. He looks like he's out. And then he'd almost, re he'd almost like bring himself back alive again. 
by fighting more. Like, it was so weird. <laughs> it's almost like getting knocked down charged him up. You know, it kind of gave him more life. But in the end, it kind of came to an end, you know, and he couldn't do it anymore. But the first couple of knockdowns almost gave him a, a second, second wind. It was so odd to watch. So that I was watching. And then, of course, Jake Paul didn't look great at all. At all. At all. Jake Paul didn't look great. And now you know why the fights that he picks are the ones that he picks. But at the end, when he called out Alex Pereira, I was thinking to myself, wow, bro. Wow. Okay, I guess. That's the next circuit attack that's going to come in. On paper, it looks like a complete mismatch. Alex Pereira looks like he would absolutely take his head off, but you never know. You never know in these situations. But I refuse to watch these fights again. I refuse. They're a complete waste of time. They're utterly... They're not entertaining. The only there's a fight before that was entertaining in the in the main card when the guy unfortunately got knocked out very very badly. He was winning on points and probably would have won the entire fight and really dominating and outclassing his opponent. And then he took his eye off the ball and then the guy just went to work, connected with like three punches to the chin and the guy was flat out before he hit the ground, face first in the canvas. Wild scenes. And that was probably a better fight and maybe a couple of hours before that. But this Jake Paul beam. Mike Perry fight wow man after all that talk after all that gas after all that promotion it just turned into like legit you can see people in your gym you can see people in your gym um I think it's called like white collar box I've got where, what the thing is called where you do in the gym with headgear but you can legitimately see people at your local amateur circuit who are better than this who will provide you with a better kind of who put on a better show like because this was so 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 terrible so terrible legitimately so so terrible and again i don't really see the appeal of these guys i don't get why people watch these things maybe it's part of, maybe you watch it because it's a bit silly you don't watch it because it's serious boxing but i think i get duped i get sold the okie though i i get involved in the rope dope like i believe the gas i buy into the market and even though i say i'm not gonna do it and i inevitably inevitably i inevitably live to regret it because he's staying up late, especially in London. I stayed up until like 6 a.m. to watch this thing. And I was like, God almighty, man. I've just messed up my entire body clock for nothing. I've just messed up my entire body clock for nothing. So I'm never doing that again. I'm never doing that again. I promise myself this time. I say it all the time with him, but I'm not doing it again. That Mike Tyson fight coming up fast, not watching. You know, he's trying to get Alex Pereira to fight him. Won't watch. Like, no way. I refuse. I refuse, man. Like, congrats to him for, like, running up the scam. For Congrats to him for, like, the hustle. Like, it's like a money hack that he's figured out because he's kind of hated and people want to see him get knocked out and he's fighting all these MMA guys and blah, blah, blah. I get it. Cool. Do you make all your money? I'm happy for you, but I'm not going to participate. I'm not going to take, I'm not going to, I'm not going to participate in this absolute farce. And one person that is not happy about the fight was Conor McGregor. Conor McGregor decided to flex his muscle as a recent part owner of um, Bare Knuckle Fighting. He decided to say Mike Perry's performance was so bad, he announced that he's fired. He said it was so bad, he's fired. So this is a Conor McGregor quote. It's somewhere down here. Let me get it for you. Um, so here's Conor McGregor's quote after Mike Perry's dismal performance against Jake. He said, hey, Mike, you're released. And you can go and compete in your smelly, dirty boxing championship thing. The smell of it. Good luck. You're fired. <laughs> Obviously, a little bit of trolling and stuff and being silly. But yeah, I'm not surprised Connor had that reaction because, wow, man. Shocking fight. Absolute shocking fight. Calling Mr. Violence, all this malarkey, and then man just goes in there and walks straight into his opponent's punches. Doesn't have any defense. Yeah, no thank you, man. No thank you. No no, no, thank you.